All right, groups, for your content for this week, uh, we have looked at the story of Jacob and Esau, specifically looking at Jacob's life and how a lot of his actions revolved around him, that he was making the decisions in his life. And for a while, a lot of those things ended up working out. But what we find at the end of the story is that Jacob is left with nothing. He has sent all of his possessions and everything he owns across the river. And Esau is coming with an army of 400 people. And we don't know what is going to take place. He doesn't know what is coming next. Um, And this is the moment that uh, he meets God in a new way. Um, God shows up and uh, completely changes his life. All of a sudden, his perspective and his outlook on what he was supposed to do supposed to be doing changed drastically. He started trusting God in a new way. And that is um, what we're going to be focusing on today, about trusting God um, in our circumstances. But not only that, like looking to God for answers. If we have problems coming up in our lives, who do we go to first? Do we try to solve it or do we allow God to speak into it? Um, Kids, If you're in the room, um, go ahead and check out the kids' questions. The leaders can walk you guys through that. Um, And then uh, adults will jump right into groups content. All right, groups, question number one. I want you guys to look back at uh, the challenge from last week. Uh, how was your week different when you held God as your dearest treasure? Question number two. I want you to start by reading Genesis 27, 1 through 10. Um, what we find in these verses is that Jacob follows through with, his, with the plan to deceive his father and steal the birthright from Esau. What significance does that birthright have? Like, why is this such a big deal? And answering that, where does Jacob put his trust in? All right, for the next thing, question number three, read Genesis 30, 1 through 14. And then we find in these verses, we find Jacob and Rachel having a hard time starting a family. Um, Here's the question in this, where do they turn for help? How do they try and fix the problem? Throughout much of Jacob's story, we find that him and his family continue to try and fix things on their own. They take matters into their own hands and they rush into situations that they would probably later regret. What has been a problem in your past that you tried to fix quickly um, on your own? How did that turn out? And what would you have done differently? I'm going to quick read Philippians 4, 6 through 7 for us a minute. It says this, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, catch this, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And the question is this, What concerns do you have about casting away all of your anxieties about the situations in your life to God? What promise do you hear in that verse 7? And how does this change your mindset for the way you live your life? All right, question number six. I want you to read Genesis 32, verse 24 through 30, um, and then answer this question together. It isn't until the end of our story that Jacob is left alone. 
He has sent his family and possessions ahead of him and he has been pushed out of his uncle Laban's house. And now he has no idea if Esau still wants to kill him uh, or what's going to happen next. And he is all alone. And the question in this is, why do you think he sees God now? Like, why, why is he just seeing God now? And when has there been a breaking point in your life that it felt like you had nowhere else to turn? What caused your situation to change? Maybe you're still in that, so maybe your situation hasn't changed. But what caused your situation to change or did your situation not change? And what was your perspective? All right, groups, the number seven, the challenge for this week um, is to take a look at your life. When problems come up, when situations come up that you typically be like, yep, I'm going to solve this right here now, uh, take a step back um, and bring it to God. And it, it's going to be hard. There's moments where just I want to make decisions and make things happen and make stuff move forward. But I think as a people, in this culture, we need to take a step back and allow God to speak into our situations. Um, that's the challenge for this week. Take two minutes. If you have a problem, if you have a situation, take the two minutes, pray about it, allow God to speak some words of wisdom into you before you address a problem. Um, if you've got some extra time and want to dive into our Digging Deeper section, uh, we look at a few situations in the Bible where names change, right? We see in the very end of this story that Jacob's name changes to Israel, where we find the Israelite people coming out of this name change. Uh, we see that numerous times throughout the Bible where names change. And we're going to look at a little bit about why that happens and the change that happens in that. So if you got some extra time, check that out. Otherwise, uh, groups, I hope you guys have a great uh, night or day or whatever time you're meeting. Um, and we will see y'all again soon.